Harrison, my oldest, and Abby being my daughter, they had two unique personalities and they loved each other and they got along pretty well, but Josh was the one thing they had in common that they both loved uh, because he was their little brother. And so it was kind of like putting the exclamation point at the end of our family. We had finished as a family a spring break trip to Hilton Head, South Carolina. We were making our way back home and we were literally five minutes from the house and the last thing I heard my wife say that day was, oh my word. Um, we were hit. We were hit by three guys in a Ford Explorer who ran a stop sign going about 55 miles an hour. Um, I watched as my wife took her last breath that day. Um, they found Josh lying in the edge of the trees about 50 feet away from the van and stopped. Uh, he was still strapped in his car seat, but he was lying face down in the edge of the woods and he was unconscious. Josh was immediately sent over to Savannah, Georgia by helicopter. And for the first four days, Josh was consistently improving. The first time I walked into the room, I was just kind of very overwhelmed. Your 17 month old doesn't belong in a place like that. And uh, he responded to my voice that morning. He stopped the moaning noise, he rolled over and he looked at me, and he smiled at me, um, which was a neat moment. Uh, that nurse, the one that was just really, really such a sweetheart to us, she, uh, she asked me if I wanted to hold Josh while I was there, and I said, yeah, absolutely. She kind of laid him down in my arms, and we had about 40 or 45 minutes to just kind of hold each other. Um, none of us could understand what the significance of those 40 to 45 minutes would later mean to me because it was literally the last time I held my son alive. By the time I left on Tuesday to go home for the night, I got that very strange phone call from the, from the hospital saying, can you please come back? And uh, I remember walking in that room that day into the midst of what felt like a very chaotic scene. And uh, that vice president from risk management walked into the room behind me and, and he said, well, Mr. Barron, your son's head wound has caused numerous seizures throughout the weekend. When your son had one of those seizures, we ordered a medication from our pharmacy and in her haste to make up the compound your son needed, she made a mistake and she sent up what is an adult dosage. It's actually five times the strength of what's required for a child your son's size. So when it hit your son's heart this morning, it stopped. So I asked him uh, what I thought was the next logical question. I said, then who is that lady and, and what is she doing to him? He said, uh, Mr. Barron, uh, that lady's a pediatric cardiologist, and right now she has her hands uh, inside your son's chest. She's massaging his heart to keep him alive. And she's been doing it for the last two and a half hours till you could get here. I looked at him and I said, well, I guess you need to let him go then. So I went over kissed him on the forehead and said goodbye. Two months later, what I got was um, a very well-polished legal response. There was no acknowledgement of responsibility. And my son was no longer a son. He was an event. <laughs>